And I know you're very familiar with Tencent. They're an LP in your fund. Uh, I want to get your thoughts on what is their thesis behind their investments? They made a big bet in Didi. Did they know at the time it was going to be so important in tandem with WeChat? Well, I think uh, Tencent's investment strategy is actually largely driven by their uh, fundamental thesis for global inv investments is just betting on the best companies around the world. I mean, when they first invested in DD, they had no idea those, there would be synergies with some of the other Tencent products. And obviously there is now using WeChat to order a cab through DD, et cetera. So I think it's, I can't, well, it's very consistent from the fact that, you know, it's the fastest growing um, Uber-like service in China and they, and they bet on it. Yeah, I, I was I was recently in China as well, talking to Cheng Wei, the CEO of Didi, and and getting a little bit of the history of that remarkable company. And it just struck me as how how the the story is so amazing, and how really the integration with WeChat at the beginning of 2014, after the red envelope promotion uh, around the Chinese New Year. Tencent realizing how powerful uh, mobile payments would be and kind of propelling Didi along with its investments in rivalry, of course, with Alibaba. Um, I, I, you know, you sort of wonder if Didi happens without Tencent and the huge investment that it made in WeChat and WeChat payments at that time. Do you think we'd be talking about Didi as a global powerhouse and an Uber rival if we didn't have that payments battle in China? Well, I think it def definitely gave them a boost. Um, but I, I actually think it became a capital, you know, who, uh, capital game. Whoever had the largest uh, ability to raise money uh, can subsidize uh, many of the promotions that they had. I mean, for a while in China, you know, some of the rides were free. Um, you know, some of our uh, employees in China was telling me that it only cost them 50 cents to drive. Not you know, sustainable. To, to, yeah, yeah, I mean, to go on DD while, you know, it cost more riding a public bu bus or subway. Yeah. So, so I think it was a major capital gain uh, game, and I think that's the biggest um, uh, reason why DD won. Do you think Tencent ever tries to replicate the WeChat ecosystem in the United States? Um, I think they're slow and steady in the US. Um, you know, they don't uh, release some of their numbers, but I think it's steadily growing. Um, but they also know that particularly for social networks and messaging um, in the world today, it's actually quite a local market. So, you know, Korea, you have Kakao Talk, uh, which we invested in. Um, Japan, you have Line. China, you have WeChat. And I think they are mature enough to understand that in the U.S., it's probably not going to be WeChat, but I think they can still um, invest in the companies that will become the WeChat of uh, US. So speaking of WeChat being slow and steady, wanting to invest in things in the US, I mean, what about Twitter? Would that make sense for Tencent to acquire potentially? Well, um, I think there's two sides to that answer. Um, on the one hand, I, I don't think Tencent likes to invest in companies that are actually on the slight decline. Um, the flip side is, you know, it's, a, it's quite a good fit in the sense that um, Tencent does not have a property like Twitter in, even in, um, in China because Weibo is completely uh, dominant as the Twitter of China. Um, of course, it's, it's, you know, at the end of the day, it's a social network. It has 340 million worldwide. And in the U.S. alone, they have 55 million. So it's possible, but you know, being anonymous, meaning you know, Twitter, many people can make multiple accounts, use any name. So I think the fit between anonymous versus WeChat, where it's much more identity-based, um, is probably not the world's best fit. However, as I said before, um, I think Tencent just wants to bet on the winners and the next generation big hits.